Let's go, Razorback fans. We have got some one-on-ones to break down. Show me some good energy in the chat. Yes, sir. You have uh, Taylor Greens trying to figure out what's going on. You got Bobby P back here. Uh, you have two coaches. I think this is T. Will and Ronnie Funch, the wide receivers coach. I, I really can't see. Obviously, we're not uh, in press man. We're a little bit off. So this is a little bit of a softer get off, which is good if you're running an all out go route, right? If you're running a go route, I want my DB to be flat footed um, midway through here instead of being all the way back here or right up in your grill. So does a good job overall, uh, you know, missing out on a nice clean contact by Lorando Johnson. This could be a little bit tighter, if you ask me, instead of it being so rounded off. And Lorando did a good job, obviously, knocking him off, um, you know, his route just a little bit. And look at how in sync Johnson is with this route. Because DB's in this spot, they're going to want to guard vertically. Um, and they don't care if you actually come back on the hitch. So you'll see, look at that. That is perfect synchronization right here. Now, where Jaden Wilson really loses his rep is the hand fighting part of it. This is so important. So Johnson does a good job getting his arm right here. And you can see it knocks Wilson off balance. What he should have done is re-swim his arm over the elbow right here of Johnson, but you'll see he doesn't do it. And you'll see now Johnson's in his hip pocket, where if in this spot, if Jaden Wilson had swiped his arm like Johnson swiped his arm, guess what? You're back in front of him. But you lose your balance, you lose your leverage, and you'll see he's just kind of knocked off of this. Look at where this ball is actually located. Bang. Bang. I mean, that is not a bad ball whatsoever, and we're not even close to it um, because he knocked you off your route, and Lorando just dominated you. So really good stuff right there. I need a little bit more from my Uno. Um, but you'll see, this is a lot of dancing right here by Armstrong, and Braxton just kind of eats him up, right? He's all over him. Uh, do you want to call this pass interference? It's very inconsistent. Some... Uh, referees tell you only if you pull, they're going to call it. But he ends up making a really good play on this ball. Good stuff. You see Hudson Clark and everyone pretty excited in the background. All right, so now we get to Malachi Singleton. I was on the Woo Pig podcast uh, recently uh, for some of my Singleton breakdowns. I'm actually going to defend him mightily because this ball is very, very, very late. I want to more so shout out uh, the route right here. This is... Uh, number 87, Cameron Bibby. Let's go, K-Bib. And you'll see that this ball is unfreaking believably late, and it allowed this DB uh, to come back into the route. Now, why am I going to defend Singleton, even though this ball is unbelievably late? Well, I don't know the basics of this drill, right? If this is a predetermined drill where the quarterback and the receiver know which route he's going to run, then yes, this is a really, really, really bad rep for Malachi Singleton because the ball needs to be... If you're the QB and you see that this DB is this far off and he's running a comeback, this ball needs to be out right now. But I think... I am guessing this is just a drill where a receiver can basically run whatever route he wants to run. And if that is the case and the quarterback doesn't know what route is coming, then I'm okay with this ball being late. But overall, a really good route right there from the walk-on. Now this right here, I'm telling you, Isaiah Satania has grown on me. Um, look, he, he absolutely ate this entire drill. Uh, this is just nasty stuff. You know you got a DB on skates when they are grabbing you this badly. I'll take this all day, every day. This is a free 10, 15-yard penalty right here. And even with him draped all over you, you still make the catch. That's some excellent ball location right there by Singleton. That is just really, really good stuff for a guy entering year three. Yeah, so we get Armstrong versus uh, Braxton again. Um, this is, is just a thing of beauty right here by Andrew Armstrong. He is a very nuanced route runner. He reminds me of extremely 
watered down college version of Justin Jefferson, right? Uh, extremely watered down. He's not near that level of player, but he he is very principled in his routes. Okay, so remember Braxton just tore him up last time. He catches Braxton flat footed, and this is what I love about him. He is actually running a dig. You can't tell by his body posture that he's actually cutting over the middle here. So he sells vertical and then bang, flat across the way right here. We don't want you drifting upfield. That is really good stuff, good ball location. Uh, you can't really do it that much better than that. All right, here we go. We have Isaac Tesla going up against Marcus Robinson. And here we go. Malachi gets the snap, and let's see how this goes. All right, a little bit of hands to the face right here at the beginning of this rep. Okay, uh, they're going to let that go. That's not, that's not hardly ever going to get picked up. And, man, that's this is just really good stuff. I mean, this is a rare case. This is a good angle right here. Natty State Sports, keeping your eyes on the torso or the hips, right? That's never really going to lie to you. That's really good stuff. Let's see if Tesla actually ends up catching this. No. Man, this ends, this was a really good rep up to the point. You don't need to hold here. You really don't. Like, if they if they can complete this back shoulder, you live with that, right? Man, that, that, that will be called in an actual game. But overall, the coverage was really good. All right, so you get some KJ Jackson action here. Action Jackson. Where's my 70s fans? Either way, um, this is a very interesting rep. You have Broden, or excuse me, yes, this is Broden going up against uh, the TCU transfer, uh, Simpson, I believe. Either way, he gets routed up. He'd probably rather me not say his real name. This is just absolute filth, okay? You're just backpedaling, backpedaling. And you're basically giving him this out just based on how your body is 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 contorted here. His he has inside leverage on this wide receiver. You know when you're getting him this good, that's a good job selling that you might be going on the out, and then all you could do as a DB is just turn. Okay, that's just filthy. I'm I'm actually impressed that uh Simpson uh let's see, Stewart. All right, here we go. It's a little cut off here. But you have Hudson Clark going up against Satania, all right? Inexperienced quarterback, but two guys that are obviously very familiar with each other. And Hudson Clark gets burned. I I do not want to see him play slot corner again. <laughs> uh, but that's what teams are going to do if, he, if he's going to continue to play. All right, we got Danico Slaughter, another single digit. Uh, from Tennessee going up against Tesla. And let's see how this goes. All right, so we start off with this rep. Tesla does have uh, a leverage advantage if he's cutting over the middle uh, just by where the hashes are uh, here or where the players are lined up on the hashes. And let's see how this goes. Okay. Oh, that's nasty. He's got him beat pretty bad, and all Slaughter can do is just hold on, and then it's over the middle. Okay. The This one-on-one -on -one drill is a lot easier when you're running routes over the middle than towards the sideline. So you do have to factor that in, but that's still really good stuff right there. All righty, so we have Dasmond James going up against uh, a, a walk-on here, okay? So this is a scholarship player, and KJ Jackson is in at quarterback. And first off, I don't know why you, you would play press man and not actually get a jam, right? I, I I am of the belief that you should jam almost every time, and then your gate is open uh, right here on the go. So if you're not going to jam, I need you to have the foot speed to stay hip to hip with them, and obviously he's burned. So we just need a ball thrown out here, and I know I was forgiving the timing on the comeback route a minute ago. If you're KJ Jackson, I need you to just plant and rip this ball down the sideline, and you could see it is a severe underthrow. And I know you would prefer an underthrow compared to an overthrow because you get some pass interference action in there. Is this PI right here? Could this still have been caught? Yeah, it's PI. 
but sometimes they don't call it. So bad underthrow, and uh, yeah. All right, so we'll get to Jacoby Criswell right here. And this is Selman Bridges, okay, the second highest ranked recruit in your entire signing class here going up against a walk-on, all right? So you want to, to see, even though he's a true freshman, you want him to see, uh, you want to see him dominate this rep. And, you know, as you can see, this was uh, a, a really tough rep. At least it's not for a big gain. You just make the easy tackle. Few things about this, uh, I, I, I might be overstating this. I, I, and I know I'm in the minority on this. I don't understand why you would put a mouthpiece on and not actually wear it, especially if you're a DB, right, where you're having to react and this thing is just jiggling all over the place. I, I, I don't know if it's a style thing. Uh, plus a a, a pink mouthpiece. Not that it gets pink. It's just. I, I don't know. Is it the aesthetic, all right? There's plenty of receivers who do this as well. Um, the second thing here, obviously, once again, if you're going to be right here, you should physically dominate this person. I like the fact that he puts his hand on him to, to kind of guide him. Uh, but what happens is he's leaning a little too much, right? He's putting too much weight on on this hand being on the body and all the receiver has to do is just throw you upfield basically and you lose all your body leverage to where the only thing you can do is grab right this is actually a good technique to get your hand on them i just don't need you to be leaning this much right because once again all they have to do is just push you on by and he might be falling down if he's not able to hold on for for dear life and Another thing, obviously, I, I don't know if Bobby is signaling in which route. Obviously, on a comeback, if you know it's a comeback, you want this throw to be delivered uh, a little bit earlier. And, like, right now, the ball should be out. Still, it's actually not, it's not the worst timing. It, it really isn't. And we want this football thrown over here. God, it's some really good ball placement right there by Chris Well on that outside shoulder. You can't really rep that any better offensively. And hopefully, Selman, once again, he's a true freshman. He continues to grow uh, as a, a player. Um, and before I share this very controversial opinion, um, and I think actually some of you are going to agree with me, please hit that subscribe button. And don't forget about Underdog Fantasy promo code Carter, deposit match bonus up to Hundo. And actually, I need your help. Arkansas fans, let me know if Traylon Burks is actually going to do something in the NFL. I keep drafting him in underdog leagues, and he keeps disappointing me. Uh, now Calvin Ridley on that team, it's going to be hard uh, for him to be a, a big-time performer. Now, this is my opinion on jersey numbers. If you wear Uno, you've got to be a dude. And I, I just don't know if Jaden Wilson's a dude, right? Before the season began... He had one power five game with the reception over 20 yards. Basically, every inbreaker worked except this one. Um, so, you know, I, I just don't know if he's an Uno. Like, if you're wearing jersey number one, I want you to be a for sure starter. And at this point, I don't know who Arkansas's best receivers are outside of Andrew Armstrong. I actually do think Andrew Armstrong's a dude, and I think he has – low-key all sec potential um but outside of that i i am very worried about this arkansas wide receiver room and when i was on Woo pig uh they disagreed with me they, they think the wide receiver room is very deep let me know what you guys think i think satania has grown on me I'm, I'm worried about tesla to a certain degree getting beat out um what about broden number five you know he had an impressive drill uh, but I, I just think it's going to be an interesting juxtaposition knowing that Arkansas's tight end room is pretty absurdly deep this year. I, I think they're deeper than a lot of the powerful programs' tight end rooms. And I, I think it's going to be really fascinating. So let's see this rep. I, I've honestly not watched this rep yet. And, oh boy, let's go. Right when I said, I honestly had not seen this. This is... Wow, wow, I, my, my breath is taken away. Please complete this. Oh, that's a good throw, too, to the outside shoulder. I hope you would complete this. I, I Hand on everything. Sometimes I watch the reps prior, 
I honestly didn't. This is just burnt toast. So I actually think this is your Uno. I think this is your top guy, Andrew Armstrong. So, um, you know, as far as the Arkansas secondary side of things, I'm a little worried about Braxton. I am. Obviously, Snacks had had, had a good day just in this portion. Uh, but, come on, it's Arkansas. It's every year. You, you, you're you not going to have a good secondary if, if you're with the Arkansas Razorbacks, right? Yeah, Cam Curl uh, just signed with the Rams, but... Man, it's Arkansas's DBs, it's every year you got to get the caution tape out. I mean, <laughs> so maybe they, they proved me wrong, but uh, we'll, we'll see. So let me know what you guys think about this wide receiver room. We shall chat soon. It is power, our SEC, bam. So floating your face, a few of our other practice breakdowns. And tonight... We're doing chicken quesadillas. Let's go. I hit the mic. That was not smooth at all. Huh? Huh? Huh?